Hello everyone and welcome back to section number three when we start doing some conversions. We're actually going to begin using moles, but in order, we're going to work up to that through a couple examples and a, a few little instruction pieces. Remember, a mole is a standard. It is always going to be 602 times 10 to the 23rd. So we can use it to make chemical conversions when we're doing chemical equations. And this is kind of the same as a dozen is always equal to 12. So that, that conversion is never going to change. A mole works the same way. So let's take a look at this first example. If a pencil weighs 2 grams, how much does one dozen pencils weigh? So I want to change from a per pencil mass to a dozen pencils. So we can put this into an equation. So we've got 2 grams per pencil. Okay, and this is for one pencil. And if I set up a conversion factor, remember this from chapter 1 when we converted metric units? I want to cancel out pencils. And what we want is if we have 12 pencils, we are exactly equal to one dozen. This unit right here is called a conversion factor, where a, you're dropping one unit and picking up another one. So if we multiply this through, pencils, I've got pencil on the, on the bottom here and on the top here, so they cancel out. 2 times 12 is 24 divided by 1 leaves me with 24 and this is grams per dozen. So I've successfully changed my unit of pencils into units of dozens. Okay, And this makes sense when we look at it this way and that's we get a little tripped up when we go to moles. Now if we're using the mass, the mass of one mole of a substance is equal to its atomic mass. So we need to be using our periodic table. This is really important. Make sure you have it with you or make sure you can find one somewhere. So here's a conversion factor. How many moles is 16.2 grams of carbon? Now what we start with is 16.2 grams of carbon. And we need a conversion factor. And this is where the periodic table comes into play. So take a look at your periodic table. And you will see that carbon has a mass of 12.01. And we're going to round this to a whole number. Now we are changing grams. We want to get rid of grams. So we need to put grams on the bottom and we're going to put moles on top. And now remember, one mole of a substance is equal to the atomic mass. We just said that a minute ago. So one mole of a substance of carbon is equal to 12 grams. And we can do the conversion. Grams cancel out. And this is where our calculator comes in. We need our calculator, so we do 16.2 times 1 gives me 16.2. Now we divide that by 12 and that gives me 1.35. So 1.35. The only units we have left are moles of carbon. Carbon has not changed. So these units carry through and this is your final answer. So very simple when we're setting up those ratios. You're always going to be solving for one mole. So always solve for one mole. And then you got to find the mass that goes with that. So a few tips down here at the bottom. First of all, set up ratios of units only and then fill in the numbers. So if we were going to do this one again, we're starting with grams of carbon and we need a conversion factor. So I want to cancel out grams and change to moles. And then we fill in our numbers from there. So we had 16.2, 1 mole, 12 grams per mole. Be sure your calculation cancels out all units except for the ones you're converting to. So again, I'll do it in red this time. Our grams cancel out because I've got one in the numerator, one in the denominator. I want moles and I want to keep carbon. So this one is set up correctly. Check your answer, right? If one mole is equal to 12 grams, this is greater than 12. 16.2 is higher than 12. So my number, my answer should have been greater than one. And it was, so it makes sense. Make sure you ask questions if you are confused. You really have to get this down. So instead of critical thinking questions for this one, instead of getting you tripped up, I've got a question set in class. So you need to come find that, that question set, all right? And then from there, I'll give you some critical thinking questions.